The day is the 16th of June 2014 and I think we're winning because today I lost 350 subscribers and 600,000 views. And so that puts me over 5 million views taken off my site from my counter and uh, 4,200 subscribers that magically disappeared in lumps of 3, 4, and 5, and 600. That's shocking. Or it means we're winning and they're gutting me. You can't stop the narrative. You can't stop what we already got done. You can't undo that. You can't change that. Sorry about the kick in there. You can't change any of that. You can't stop the truth anymore. And so you think you can like delete four or five or today 350 subscribers that's going to demoralize me maybe or something like that do you think i really care how many subscribers i got do you think i do this for something as trivial as that do you really think that you think that's going to change you think like de just delete my account and see what happens see if i like give it all up and walk away i can guarantee you that'll never happen it's not going to happen my dot orgs dot net Dot com. That's coming. That's coming short order. In fact, tomorrow, same as what you're doing to me, I might just, not might, I will. We'll have a dot or tomorrow night. I already checked it out just a few minutes ago. And it's a piece of cake. And you know what? The spot... It's formatted for your phone right away. No matter what I do, it's formatted for your tablatures. It's formatted for your TVs. It's formatted automatically seven different ways. So it accommodates pretty well all the devices out there. And I don't have to do none of that. So it's really easy. I just write my article and post my information. And no more Google shit. Well, we'll see. I'm really upset about that. Look at me. Well, I lost 350 subscribers. Oh, everybody hates me. I don't think like that, see? All I do is I research and I compile a whole bunch in a folder and then the folder goes in the black hole. Or I make a video or a live stream. And some of that stuff might be cigarettes. The cigarette got no filter because the filter makes the particles smaller and it gets through the liners of your lungs much, much easier. And the stuff you don't want getting through, besides the fact that the filters are toxic on top of that, is the 4,000 chemicals that they put in cigarettes but are not in this cigarette. And those 4,000 chemicals are legal because the EPA, your loving government, in 1981, grandfathered in when they hung the shingle outside their door, 1981 for... They grandfathered in 65,000 plus chemicals. Every chemical known to man, but no environmental, no human impact studies. And so this lighter is much more worse than that cigarette. They've been doing peer review studies now for over four or five decades trying to link uh, nicotine to cancer and they still can't do it. But if they took a few moments and looked at those 4,000 chemicals, and so they're, you know, whoever woke up one morning and said, hey, you know, I got a great idea. I'm going to put 4,000 chemicals in the cigarettes. <laughs> and you just put heroin in it. But 4,000 chemicals. And so then you demonize everybody because they smoke. And how the hell can they stop when you got 4,000 chemicals to kick? It's okay, though, because they're legal. There's no moral or ethical attachments to that. But it's okay because they're legal, right? And then you can disregard somebody with a cigarette in their hand because that's what you read and hear in the idiotic world of constructed media, constructed paradigms, constructed life, where you're taught as a, you know, follow a celebrity. Why would you want to follow a celebrity? I mean, you know, the only good thing about Tom Cruise's latest movie was that he got killed over and over and over and over and over and over and over to the whole entire movie. I've never, I never watched uh, very many movies anyway in my life, but I must admit I really enjoyed that, that part of it. I was like, yeah, yeah, die, Tom, please. Same actor ever since he showed up. 
It's the same music in the restaurants and the supermarkets. That you're not going to find it on my site. That's all original music. A couple of thousand original artists. You go to their page and you'll find, you know, uh, 50 times that. They all got 10, 20, 100 songs up there, original music. They got covered here, but I'm just saying, you know, that you're, you're led around by your nose to believe just a couple of handful of things, like the NRC is going to have your best interests uh, at hand, and they don't. They really, truly don't. They got no intentions of telling anything to do with the truth. And you can download 2,000 pictures below this video. You can download a couple of million emails from the NRC below this email um, video. And they'll tell you the story. You don't need to sit here and listen to me. Just go look through that stuff. I'm not here because I want to be. I'm here because we got to have somebody out there telling them the truth. You know, uh, at some point on the planet, this planet has to grow up. People have to grow up. People have to put down their, you know, their security blanket for a minute and just have a glance at the real world and what happened. We had an event on this planet. It wasn't a meteorite, but it was much worse. It was much more insidious because it not only kills all the creatures in the ocean and 50% of the oxygen production on this planet, but it kills all the life on the planet. It, you know, you won't find these elements from Fukushima anywhere else on the planet. The NRC and the Senate just had a hearing where they said there was no structural damage to Fukushima. I put out a video last night about a minute long of them saying that. And if you go look, download the 2,000 pictures below my video, you'll have to ask the same question I did, is where are the pools? What pools? They blew up. They're gone. And yet they're at the Senate hearing on TV, showed right across America, North America, saying that there was no structural or integrity was uh, intact, and there was no damage to the fuel pools, nothing to be concerned about. The fuel pool on number three is missing. That's missing. Number four melted down twice. It detonated. Number three was such a, a big bang. They felt it 25 uh, miles away. An AP reporter reported that. They felt the explosion 25 miles away. That was Mox Fuel. Mox Fuel is, and if you look it up, you'll find the mainstream clips if that gives you solace. But uh, the academic peer review studies work for me. I don't believe in Fox and CNN. That's not media. Media is 4,000 peer review academic studies that are published every day. You can't read through them. That's 1,000 pages in each one. You can't read that. But you can imagine if you just, you could read the ticker tape on those academic studies, there's three a minute, every minute, 1.6 million a year. And say there's 1,000 pages in a study and say there's a, and documentations, and say there's a, a thousand hours on a peer review study, it might be 30,000 hours, it might be 5,000 hours, but say there's a thousand hours anyway, because they're using universities and all those students, and all of those academic published studies that you paid, you paid for that, you paid for the universities, they're locked away at Elsevier, Springer, Wiley, they own 20,000 of the most prestigious academic journals on the planet, and they get the copyrights to your to your, your hard-won science, right? The last hundred years, we're the generation of science. We truly are. And we have put away enormous, made, created, just in North America, an enormous amount of academics and studies. And so we have knowledge. We think we do. We should. Sounds like we do. 4,000 a day. That sounds like knowledge to me. That's inconceivable, isn't it? Doesn't that, like... Amaze you? Does that surprise you that we do 4,000 peer review academic studies a day? You pay for it. You pay for the institutions, the heat, the lights, the expendables. You pay as your children, you pack their lunches, you pay their tuitions. You subsidize it all with taxes. You give them the best equipment on the planet. Well, why do you do that? So they can train your kid? 
And then they can produce all these peer review academic studies for free with all that slave labor that paid to go there in the first place. And you take all that energy and all that creativity and all those hopes and all those dreams and you amass 1.6 million, million academic journals a year, just in North America, on every subject under the sun. Most of it about the nuclear industry. Most of it finding ways to make you, uh, poison you and destroy you. Just like the EPA grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals without no environmental or human impact studies. They don't care about you. They don't care about you. They wouldn't do that. They couldn't care less about you. You know, if you really want to go down that road of corporate personhood, you know, this was an amendment to the slavery law to give to slaves, black people, the same rights as you in North America. And then that amendment has another amendment put onto it to give corporations most of the same rights, corporate personhood. And Justice Hugo Black wrote in 1939 that it was absurd that an amendment meant to, to free slaves from an oppressive and a tyrannical government is being used by corporations to enslave a sovereign people. And this is a profound implication forever and ever and ever. Corporations don't pay taxes. And so they put all their money in offshore accounts. Now when they come into your communities, I'm just going to finish on that before I go to the NRC, but when they come into your community and you got a Starbucks show up, you got Tim Horton show up, you got Walmart and McDonald's and Harvey's or something like that show up, that'll kill every mom and pop in the community. Well, that means nobody's paying taxes anymore. And so then the community is the only way to survive the government and grow bigger and more stupider and privatize any natural resources that your community has is to tax you so they can live a fantasy life and feel like they're actually important. And they'll give away everything they got to anybody that comes along with a suit and tie on or a dress on from the system. They'll just give it away. As long as they get a little pocket change, they don't care. And so ultimately, where will you end up if the corporations rule your communities and they kill all the industry in your community? Remember, you know, a cashless society is useless. It's the stupidest thing imaginable. Because if you go look at Asia or any other countries that are really truly, you know, just shaking and moving, that's cash. You won't see, uh, you know, all those rickshaws and all those other, those boots they set up on the streets, which are just incredible businesses, unimaginable amounts of money moving through those areas all day, every day. And like, you know, when, when a community has money, people are out doing things. They got money in their pocket, they're out swinging deals, they're out making things happening, they're getting drunk and burning money, and, and communities profit off all of this. Shops are doing good and they're hiring more people, even part-time, but good money all the time. And work uh, exists. It booms around cash. It, it throttles down and gets choked down because there's no cash in a society. And they're gonna track, trace, and database you as an industry. But also, at the same time, they get a lot of other information. So, say you're driving down the road with your super, super duper smartphone, and you have an accident, and you're drunk. Well, you sign into your smartphone with your finger, it reads your blood alcohol. Not only that, the accelerometer in your phone says you were going over the speed limit. So now you got no insurance and you're going to jail. You deserved it because you were going over the speed limit and you were drunk. But that's not the point. The point is, you know, uh, if you're in a room breathing smoke, uh, somebody else smoke pot, then your boss says, ah, you got drugs in your system. No, no, uh, you got to go into rehab. You got to pay for it. We're going to deduct it off your checks and we're going to drop your wages down. We're going to have to put a robot in there to replace you for a while until you get your act together. You're living in a world of construct, is what I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to show you. And that's what the NRC has done to you. It's constructed 
just fable and hoax and ultimately it's going to murder you everything on this planet that's what it's going to do to us <laughs> you got three melted reactors 100 percent at fukushima three melted reactors say it after me there's three melted reactors they're 100 percent each chernobyl was 30 percent of any of the reactors at fukushima and it was one third the size and it was only a 30 percent meltdown that's a lot to say after me, I know. You know, I'm just... don't want to be here. I really, truly don't. I don't want to be... I never, I never wanted to do this. I just wanted to come out and bash a few celebrities, bash a few politicians, make some stupid videos about some cool shit. Some dorky videos about cool shit and... Just be another person on the planet. Instead, I cover thousands and thousands of headlines on Fukushima and radiation and the lies and manipulations, the deception, the harmful, hurtful insinuations. Like, I mean, so many people have attacked me. I don't really care. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> It's like losing 350 subscribers today, 600,000 views. I don't care. And I, oh, that's six. I'm like, win, huge win. I got to rebuild everything. I'm like the bionic, uh, the bionic uh, Canadian. Blah. I'm the Canadian terrorist, actually. I've done a video many years ago. To cover that again one of these nights. Special report. Plutonium levels suggest fuel rods were shattered during the hydrogen explosion, June the 27, 2012. So that's why you got all the iodine. Now remember, anywhere you read iodine, like Canada had 300 times iodine 131, then background. Well, what the frig is a background? What the hell is that? What? <laughs> what the frig are you talking about when you're telling people that? Well, background of a glass of water is 7,400 barrels. That's freaking frightening. Actually, it's not. 7,400, that's a huge number, right? But it doesn't mean nothing, because if you drink the water, the potassium-40 that we're talking about, you know, somehow or another, they call that a radioactive. That's not man-made. That's natural. Everything got a, a potassium-40. And so they like doing those numbers, and then say, oh, there's only a couple of barrels of uh, uranium. But there's 7,400 barrels of potassium in your drinking water. Be careful when you're getting a drink or washing your hair. Blah, blah, blah. They won't say that. <laughs> but, I mean, they'll say, you know, there's uranium in the ocean, 238. But you can take, you can go swimming in the ocean all day, every day. not going to hurt you. not going to affect you. Well, unless you're in the Pacific. But all oceans are connected together. They're all connected together. And there's St. Paddy's Day, 1,440 minutes a day going into the ocean. Well, you know, like St. Paddy's Day where you put 25 pounds of dye in a river and it runs down the river and the river turns green. That kind of, you know what I'm talking about? Five pounds, 10 pounds, 25 pounds. Well, there's a thousand pounds a minute coming out of Fukushima. A radioactive dye. Think of it that way. It doesn't lose its color for a thousand years. Uh, every minute, 1,440 St. Paddy's Day a day for 1,170 days for over three years are the most toxic stuff imaginable. You take a bat off Fukushima, you're done. You go down there and swim around for two minutes, you're dead, you're dead. It'll cook you. It's millions and billions of backwards of everything, strontiums. And by the way, you know, before I forget, I, I, once again, iodine 131, 300 times in Canada, times 7,500 is what they're employing which is potassium-40, which is irrelevant, but what they're employing is not, because <laughs> it's man-made iodine. There's not, you know, these elements don't exist on the moon, they're not created by the sun, but uh, 300 times, that means there was 10 times, that's 3,000 times of iodine-132, and you uptake that nine times more effectively into your thyroid. But that, there was also 30 times more of iodine 133. Yeah, I take a short half life, but that's times 10. So even if it's two days, it's 
20 days. It only takes three days to cross the ocean at 100 miles an hour in the jet streams. And it went up into the jet streams for seven months. And the disposition comes, it just blow, it lingers right over British Columbia, right over America. In a period of 40 days, everything got blanketed and is living in a saturated, invisible snowstorm. And so a lot of that gets washed down and washed back down the rivers and estuaries, drinking water, down to your coastline. And the EPA now has increased the drinking levels of uh, cesium-137, a man-made radioactive material from Fukushima, at 7,400 becquerels a cubic meter. Now, it also got, you know, in that it's got potassium-40. And so if you drink potassium-40, you off-gas. But when you're drinking the cesium, you keep accumulating. It stays in you. It's really bad. It attacks your heart, attacks your liver. By the way, um... Little update for you. This is really good news. Uh, you see a link below for the DCA. Well, we got a friend here. Um, he's dying of cancer, and so we got him on the DCA in about three weeks. And he went in, or yeah, almost three weeks. Um, so we went. In, he went into the doctor, and his liver and his wait well, no, his liver and his kidney has repaired itself 40%. He wasn't supposed to come out of the hospital. But we got hold of him and we, kept, we keep feeding him the DCA. You can get that from a compound chemist. There's no pharmaceutical to it. But I think that's, that is a, like, at least we got one good story tonight anyway. That's such great news because he's such a nice person. And he doesn't deserve to be murdered by chemotherapy. Because that's what chemotherapy is. Radiation is murder. All radiation is murder. No, 2% of the people with chemotherapy survives it. 2%. But nobody recovered like that. They, they don't even know what to make of it at the hospital here. They don't know what to make of it. They don't know why. They can't figure it out. What the hell? It was uh, 40% for the kidney... 40% for the liver, 40% and 35 or 37% for the kidney restored, back to working normal, actually working really well, and gained a bit of weight. Was in there, pumped them, they gave him the last numbers. Canadian government cut them off after $37,000 or whatever were the chemo, and we found out about them. And so hopefully that trend continues. At least that's good news. It's good to see him feeling good. It's good to see that the hospital, who don't still don't understand what happened, is scratching their head. And like, it's not like I haven't told all the farmers in this community. It's not like I haven't talked to them all. Trust me. I had them go up to the hospital and found the dandelion root tea studies that were is distributed out and was buried under all the facts. And, she, and one of the farmers here, she went up and she seen me a couple of weeks later and she stopped me. She said, Dana... I was at the hospital, I dug through the paper, and I found that study that I was telling her about. Because she knows what I'm like. She knows what I'm like. It's not, I'm not, I don't lie. I'm not, there's nothing to gain by lying. There's nothing to gain by fabricating or misrepresenting anything. There's everything to be gained by giving you the honest truth and letting you make up your own mind. You know, I'll connect a lot of the dots for you, but they, it has to resonate before it works for anybody. I got one headline in. That wasn't very much. Okay, next headline. Uh, March the 14th, 6.30 a.m., the Washington Post. Japan races to contain the meltdown after two blasts. The third reactor loses cooling capacity. What do you think that means? Two blasts. Go look up. Download the pictures underneath my videos. 2,000 at TEPCO's website in package, in 99 packages. 10, 12, 14 megabytes each. The Fukushima 50 took them, most of those pictures. Pretty well all of those pictures. And so you'll see radiation on uh, some of the pictures. But they're spectacular pictures because they were when the accident happened and shortly after that, right? The salt water set up the whole nine yards. The actual carnage... That's mad cool. That's mad cool. 
And we don't see those pictures show up in the media. We don't see those pictures show up on TV. We don't see those pictures at David Oik. We don't see them at Jeff Rince. We don't see them at Red Ice Creation. We don't see them anywhere. And I'm not saying that Jeff is doing a good job. He's pumping it out there. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we don't see those pictures showing up anywhere. And we don't see the pictures showing up at certainly Alex Jones. Fucking lawyer. You fucking lawyer. I'll fucking call you out soon, boy. I'm going to stomp you down. You fucking maggot. Fuck you, Alex. You piece of shit, boy. You lying sack of shit what you've done about Fukushima. You lying fucker. Somebody clip this out and send it to him. You lying fuck. Oh, he swore. I'm not going to have nothing to do with him. I'm a religious person. You lying murdering fucker. You lying bag of shit, boy. What you done about Fukushima? I got your fucking name. I got your fucking number. I know what you did. I downloaded everything when you done it. I'm chopping it up as I'm going along. If I had my wire cast, and I will, we'll be ordering that eight core computer this week. You'll be one of the people I'm gonna stomp down, boy. I, I, I got what you done. Pretty slick too. You know, he brought on uh, Fukushima facts, nobody to counter that kind of friggin' lie that some guy working at Hanford with 41 miles of open pits, 41 fucking miles of open pits, 200 miles of contaminated radioactive groundwater, 450 fucking billion gallons dumped directly into the soil and try to say that the person who got sick there got sick from eating a fucking deer or an elk that ate grass a decade after fu at fucking Chernobyl. I feel like I'm ready to strangle somebody now. I'm that pissed off. I'm ready to strangle people at this stage. Because we're going we're gonna to kill everything on this planet anyway. But we can't keep this lie going. What the fuck is the sense of that? What's the sense of that fabrication? you got to realize that it's St. Patty's Day into our environment all day every day from three melted reactors. One of them is ten times... Um, Two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. Reactor 3, MOX fuel. They were using nuclear weapons for fuel. They were sitting in silos for who knows how long. For fuel. And building 3 is missing. And the Senate hearing, the NRC, putting out a two-hour of everything is there is a factual lie. You can sit there and research everything they're saying. And I, I've watched it six times. It's two hours long. Six times. It's shocking. It's, it's truly shocking. And that would, like, we're driving down the road at a, at a big wall at a thousand miles an hour. And nobody's fucking in control. And everybody's arguing over what channel is on the fucking radio. As long as my channel is not on it. And everybody blaming it on gold, global warming. Ah, they want to sequester the carbon for their underground bunkers when this all goes to shit. For their greenhouses underground. That's why they want all that carbon. That's what that's for, is for greenhouses. They want it now because of so much radio, there's so much radioactive atoms and radioactive particles, which are the exact same. Because when the buildings are falling in on these reactors, they are creating radioactive fucking particles. They are atomizing and they're solid. 9,000 degree Fahrenheit, 5,000 degree Fahrenheit, 2,000 degree Fahrenheit. It's still going to atomize those big, huge, massive buildings as they, and rocks and the cement. They're atoms and particles, folks. All things are atoms and particles. And they become ionized and radiated when they come in contact with those hot coriums or the X-ray and the neutrons from the chunks all over that site. The time for war, the time for living in a fantasy is over. Because it's game over now. This is checkmate. Fukushima's checkmate on this whole planet, on every creature. All 8 million species are in the same boat. And the numbers are going to be really small soon. 
we're going to see some serious mass die-offs in the next four and five and six years if we're lucky it would last that long. We're seeing it now. We're just not accounting for it. It was huge right away. All the studies were out there. Baby deaths right after Fukushima. Studies. Abnormality. There was a spike in babies dying. There was a spike in heart attacks of 20, 30,000. Way more than that. But that's what they... This was numbers that were significant. Could be 10 times more than that. Probably was. But it's ongoing too. Then the autoimmune deficiency diseases. Then all the babies born with issues. We're, we're really truly living in the last moments of our history. We really are. We're, we're in an extinction level event and everybody's in denial. Everybody's hoping that we're... And I, you know, jeez, I give up. I'll give up my left nut and my right arm if to be wrong, trust me. I'll let you pull all of my teeth out on YouTube live with no fucking painkillers if I'm wrong. Just... We can bring in CBS and they can all mock me till the end of time. I'd be happy. I got no problem with that. Like walking down the road, ah, you're the W tattoo of the extinction event. I mean, yeah, that was me, man. That was me. I'm an idiot. I really hope that day comes. That'd be awesome. That'd be so cool. I got no issues with that. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wear, I wear, a, I wear a sign on my back. I was an idiot. But the people out there that are not talking about it, not dealing with it, they're the ones that will put the sun, will tattoo their fucking heads in the future. We don't hang them from street lamps. Because it won't be me. This whole planet is going to go off. You know, we got 20 species of starfish dying off on this coastline. The entire coast of North America, 20 species of starfish now, melting. I spent 14 years as a commercial diver the ocean floor is covered. The most important part of the ocean floor is starfish. If you were to build a habitat, right, you know you succeeded when it was populated with starfish because everything else, everything that it does creates the habitat is the environment. These are localized animals. These are genetic superior animals through creation, through billions of years of genetic selection. These were the creatures whose DNA was superior and had made it to this last moment in time of history. This is the end as we'll ever know it. Nothing but hell coming our way. And they're gonna to try to blame it on religion. But I mean, these elements are man-made. These are man-made. These are not the elements of our universe, of our solar system, of our periodic tables. These are man-made. And there is nothing on the planet can survive in close proximity to even the tiniest, even to the atom will give you the cancer. If you ingest it and you will, and you have already, it's like getting an x-ray every moment of your life because it's inside of you. The lies have been so much and so many and so endlessly. That's why I need that I need that whole wire cast. And I'll have that really quick here. Tomorrow's the dot org. Uh, and then order the computer this week and then I'll have it early next week from Best Boy. And I'm sure they'll jack it on the way and put some software on it for me. Fuck me over again. And I say that because I've had eight computers taken down. Eight computers taken down in seven months. Is that how long I've been doing this shit? Seven months? Damaged fuel rods are cracked and leaking radioactive gases in Fukushima Unit 4. Do you think somebody went in there with crazy glue and fixed all of that? Do you think somebody went in there with fucking Play-Doh, stuck it on the fuel rods and said, Ha ha, done. Booyah, check it out, dude, I fixed it with dough, Play-Doh. No. The building blew up. You can't get in there because it's, it was covered in projectiles from the other reactors, too, of hundreds of thousands of fuel rods. Unit 3 was right alongside, right in the middle. It sprayed everything. Everything. They went in there with bulldozers, bulldozed everything on there that, they could, that was killing people. And you could be sure a lot of people are dead, died. I mean, they're using homeless in there. They're using homeless, and if they get sick and they can't, they're bleeding from the nose or mouth or something like that, the teeth are falling out, and their hair is falling out, then they'll kick them loose, tell them to pick up their check next week. If they were usually won't make it. They've murdered probably, uh, well, they ran out of homeless, haven't they? Down there? The Kuzos, they're, they're kidnapping them off the street, Shanghai. It's despicable. 
the most dangerous job on the planet, and we use the homeless. That tells you how much trouble we're actually truly in. The, the buildings were all cracked in two by the earthquake and the tsunami ripped the wires and the control boxes and the telephone poles for uh, 500 miles. It was washed with that tsunami, 500 miles. It wasn't just Fukushima. Right, and he pumped all that salt water in there. That sealed their fucking fate right there. You can't blame them. There were 600 helicopter pilots at Chernobyl died of cancer, radiation poison, radiation sickness. There were seven people on one street in Fukushima died of radiation sickness, dropped dead on one street. Imagine if you lived in a city and there was a street there were seven people in three years drops dead and there was a radiation accident nearby. Gee, you don't suppose they got something. How bizarre is that? Fukushima, 10 liters of radioactive water, a half a million becquels, cubic uh, centimeter, half a million becquels, rather. Nuclear engineer estimated 276 quadrillion, that's a thousand, I can't remember, a thousand billion billion, yeah. Uh, CCM 137, what about the 134, 135, 138, 139, what about the uranium 234, 235, 236, 237, 238, well, that is, I might do that on purpose. What about all the strontiums and cesiums? And by the way, the iodine 139, like 300 times back around Canada, March 2011, that doesn't frighten the shit, you don't know what is. But like once again, there was 10 times 132 iodine. There was 10 times that they never even bothered telling you about. And that it had to be 30 times more of the iodine 133. And remember, for every iodine 131, there's every three, there's a fourth one's an iodine 129 with a 15 million year half life. What do you think that stuff is not? Uh, that sticks to everything like crazy glow. That's everywhere. But the buckyballs, well, they keep re -liber liberating themselves all that salt water. I'll get back to that in a minute. But... The cesium, every time you hear cesium, you got to remember there's a hundred times more strontium and they don't travel alone. Right? Cesium doesn't travel alone. It's a hundred times more strontium fucking came with that. And you're breeding it in. Cancers take 5, 10, 15 years to grow. Some of some people will just die of heart attacks. Cesium goes right to the heart. So the strontium goes right into the bones. That's why you're seeing an increase of the leukemias and blood disorders, and diabetes in particular. Because it attacks your, your, your bone, it attacks your bone marrow, and the producers, like in your pelvis, where you produce most of the bone marrow, the, the stem cells, it attacks the white blood cells. It drives your white blood cells, all your joints and your spleen, into a freaking frenzy, and that displaces all the oxygen in your body, and that's why you feel lethargic. Freaking pissed off tonight. But, you know, nuclear engineers say an estimated 276 quadrillion becquels of cesium entered the Fukushima basements. The basements. <sighs> Just that number alone is frightening. But see, that's, not, that's what this is about, though. This is all about huge numbers. That's actually not a big number compared to the big numbers. If you take a single fuel pool with 122,000 rods typically in a fuel pool, 12 feet long, and a gram produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands than all the beaches on the planet combined, that a gram produces more radioactive atoms, and an, any atom is enough to give you a cancer, to grow a tumor, because that's what your body does. It tries to put it in a sarcophagus. Fukushima is hemorrhaging into the ocean nonstop. Thousands of miles of clouds getting picked up on the ocean, dragged in over your, con your community, and so... It accumulates in your community over the last three years, and it continues to accumulate in your community. All of these is not just the ocean. It's what came across originally. It's what's still in the lower and upper tropospheres. It's what is still in the forest. When you have forest fires and burn or mow your lawn, or when your community is out there mowing the lawns, or when the ocean smashes into the coastline, when the rain washes it back down through the mountains, through your communities, through your drinking water, into your farms, it's accumulative. And at some point, 
it's like everybody's getting huge doses and living in a like 10 Beckwells, living in uh, 12 Beckwells rather of man-made radiation in that environment will cause permanent lesions to your organs. 50 will, cut, will do some serious lesions to your organs and we're living in that and then some. Like you can't take a Geiger counter and measure potassium 40 in water because you would have to dry up a cubic meter of water way up to potassium 40 and figure it out that way. It's okay though because it's harmless. Stupid, insignificant, everyday normal background radiation that has nothing to do with this with E equals MC square. But they, they use that and they pretend it does. And every every apologist you read out there, every every mainstream media you go to out there is gonna equate bananas, walking in sunshine, getting a dental x ray, chest x ray, flying on a plane because of altitude and getting more stupid radiant radiation that's radiant radiation heat from the sun it's not a radioactive isotope from a man-made radi uh, reactor and all your communities are all the reactors are, are hemorrhaging into your community all of them are hemorrhaging all of them are right on the ocean or right on a river and their whole shit plan is to run away and let the ocean or the river come in and consume the core right so the coral melt down, the ocean will come in and fill up that hole. This is their oh shit plan. It really is. And that's why you hear all these explosions. These reports of all these explosions back in the first year in particular. The cores went straight down. They they were they're gone down. They're still burning though. I mean they was nine thousand degree Fahrenheit temperatures coming out of there uh, two years ago. So they were down there. But you're, that's what they do. They burn hotter than the sun because they got nothing to do with what the sun does. The sun creates elements. We destroy elements. We create elements ourselves that don't exist anywhere else in our solar system and that we have now, it's almost impossible to avoid them. They're everywhere on this planet. Everything on this planet has dealt, is living in a radiated environment. And the whole problem with that is that's, if that's not bad enough, it's still ongoing all day, every day. It doesn't stop, right? It doesn't stop. It's hemorrhaging those melted reactors and the coriums and the chunks and the fissionable products are all being sprayed with water. There's water, thousands of tons running underneath the site every day, and that's scooping up, and they're spraying water on everything and flushing it down there anyway. The basements are broken and flooded. That tells you right off the bat, how bad the site is, is liquefaction. And we don't try to deal with it. We've got the NRC and the Senate, and they spend two hours fabricating, just fabricating everything. They attacked the NRC, Boxer did, and at the same time, she let all the senators get off scot-free with blatant lies, like saying that nobody's ever died of, of radiation, that nobody's ever been hurt by radiation, that they have a perfect record um, with their nuclear power plants. Just, you know, never mention, fuck, don't bother mention Hanford. Don't bother mention the 45,000, 45 gallon drums you dropped off the coastline of California. Don't bother mention, you know, the SL1 accident. Don't bother mention the rockets that blew up with plutonium in it and how everybody got plutonium in their bodies because of that single rocket. Don't bother mentioning the massive amount of experiments done on humans by the industry in the United States and Canada. Don't bother mentioning the massive murdering of the Beagles, Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless, New Mexico. You know, don't bother mentioning any of that. Don't bother mentioning that there was a truck fire at Carlsbad, New Mexico, if, you know, and they abandoned it for nine days because of a truck fire. And then they had a radiation release, so they didn't have to go back down. But 170 people wouldn't go down to the mine for nine days for a truck fire. And you're supposed, and you know, and the media kept pumping that out there. No, nah, truck still burning, can't go down there. And then they had a radiation release, so they didn't have to go back down. That's twice I said that. Because obviously it's not getting through. Obviously people out there are too fucking stupid to use that as a beating stick. I think that's the best thing out there you could say to retaliate against anybody talking about whip is say yeah they had a truck fire for nine days 
Because everybody knows truck fires are so fucking dangerous, you can't go back down to a mine when it's out or when it's burning. You can't come down the other side and put it out because it's a truck fire. It's the stupidest thing imaginable. And they all had this panic and they all had to get out of there because they had a truck fire and then they rescued each other and there was a big hoo-ha at, at WIP at the Waste uh, Repository in New Mexico. But, you know, they blamed it on a truck fire. They're not going to tell you the truth. And so that means all that radiation that came out of there spread all over those communities in a thousand square miles. Just like, you know, they're having 40 or 50 up to 100 nuclear above ground testing a year before the ban came in, in Nevada, in Alaska. Do you, where do you think the fucking radioactive fallout went to? Do you think it turned to fairy dust, you stupid fuckers, you idiots, you morons at the Senate and the NRC, you traitors of humanity, you cowards? You'll go down in history as the biggest losers ever. I'll make sure of that. You people are the scum. You're absolute filth. You're disgusting what you've done in that two hours. You have to go back to my one minute video yesterday to find a link to it. But the NRC and the Senate, that was disgusting. You did you lying sacks of shit, you hopeless fucking traitors. Just like Alice Jones done for Fukushima and continues to do it with Fukushima. Just a lying sack of shit, boy. Hopeless, useless, maggot. He's got so much money now, he's just turned fucking evil on us. The one hope we had out there, because he could reach people, turns out to be a fucking asshole. And ignored everything. He's one opportunity... He came out and he lied to everybody. Then he launched his iodine campaign. So what? You take Alex Jones' iodine. Do you think the fucking the radiation is going to say, Oh, you took iodine. I'm going to go away now. No, it's going to go somewhere else in your fucking body, you morons. He had Dr. Doug Rorke on the program. Dr. Doug Rorke even told him. You can see Alex's face glow like, holy fuck. No, he kept going, boy. Kept telling people the same story over and over and over. Take my iodine. You'll be okay. 50 bucks a little bottle. It's a good deal, man. Got it out of the middle of the earth. Do jack fuck all. In the context of what he's saying. It's good for you. I'm not saying that. But to use it in that context and then say there's nothing to worry about but you better buy it just in case. I got no respect for that. That pisses me off. At some point I'm going to alienate myself from everybody anyway. Then I know I won. I truly won. Like I did today. I, I felt I won today when I looked at my site and I said, Ah, I lost 350 subscribers. Ha <laughs> ha. They're after me again. That's over, that's 4,200 subscribers in the last year and a half or so. That Google took away from me in chunks like that. I've lost over 5 million views. 600,000 again today gone. It's not that I care. I'm just saying, but that's... <laughs> Why do that to me? To get me out of the rankings, I suppose? I was expecting to pass 14,000 subscribers and give it a mention to Marler the next day because I seen the numbers were up there. I was like 50 away from it. Not that I care. But I mean, my goodness, to take 350 subscribers away from me and I have people all the time telling me they've been unsubscribed to them and I see people resubscribing to me over and over and over. They don't need to tell me what's going on. I see it. They subscribe and then they come back a week later and they subscribe again. And they come back a week later and they subscribe again. It's the damnedest thing. Why do they do that? Because they're getting unsubscribed. And it's shocking that people are... And that's because I came out against the NRC last night. I guess they jacked 350 of my subscribers. Why did you think I was going to curl up into a ball and never bring up the topic again? Give your fucking head a shake. And when it falls off, give it a real good kick. Better yet, give it to me. I'll give it a fucking kick for you. Wall Street Journal. Extreme contamination and maggots found at the Senate and the NRC meeting recently. But back in July of 27, they were found in the trench of Fukushima plant. Two billion Beckwells a liter. They should have to... All those people at the, at the NRC and the Senate hearing, they should have to drink every liter that comes out of Fukushima. That's how evil they are. I wouldn't wish that on anybody, I suppose, but that's how evil they are. That's how twisted. They would want you to do it. 
They don't care about you. These, that was the evilest thing. I watched it six times, two hours long. It was shocking. I sat there with a teddy bear and a blanket and a little water bottle to keep me warm. It's summertime, too. And I just felt this coldness you know, the whole time. And the more I watched it, I got frostbite on one of my toes from watching it six times. Because these are cold, demented, twisted fuckheads for lack of better terms. I don't even care tonight. Plutonium evaporated and spread around as gas after Fukushima meltdown. September 27, 2011. Yeah, plutonium evaporated because the buildings blew up. <laughs> Go look at the pictures below. There's 2,000 of them. Download them. How come you don't see those pictures in the media? Tevco, got them there for you. Go knock your socks off. I only put them on there every video I put up in the last four months. It's been there every time. I missed a uh, scatter time, but it's back there the next time. Right? It's not like they can't find them. It's not like those people, all you people who re uploads these videos haven't put the links there. Over and over and over. It's not like they're not out there. Uh... Nuclear fuel fragments found over a mile away were ejected from the reactor cores in those explosions. Not spent fuel pools, according to the NRC. You never say it a couple days ago, but that was August the 18th, 2011. The NRC said the nuclear fuel fragments found over a mile away were ejected from the reactor cores in the fucking explosions. What part about that is it? You can't remember, but you can't find it all of a sudden. It don't exist. Oh, no. No, everything's fine. The integrity of the building is fine, sir. I put that video out last night. No, no, the structure's good. We're all fine, boy. Telling the Senate. And then the Senate's lying, and the Senate was sucking the nuclear industry's cock the whole fucking time. Just boop, 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 boop. The whole fucking time. Gobble, gobble, gobble. The Senate sucked the NRC's cocks, and they were, it was a big fucking daisy chain. They were just like, they, you should have seen them, they are all pandering to each other, giving each other reaches around the whole fucking time under the table, I bet you. It was the most disgusting thing I have ever seen. They probably had a party after where they were all naked, and they were taking those immigrants crossing the border, those children, gutting them and pouring it over themselves, and dancing around in front of a fire... That's how I feel anyway after watching the video. Two hours of pure lies, pure ma manipulations designed so that nothing will ever happen. Nobody will ever try. 4,000 peer review academic studies a day and we not even going to try. There was a big meteorite coming at you. You sure as fuck get your asses in gear and do a few fucking studies. Huh? NASA will be like, cool, we're finally fucking back in the game. No tobacco, no six, 4,000 chemicals, no filter. I'm losing my mind tonight. i got to remember not to put my chair against the wall because it squeaks, like Ken and Barbie. Ken Buesler is going around. I haven't got 4,000 chemicals in my cigarette, and there's no filter, so fuck off. Ken Buesler from Woods Hole Oceanographic. Uh, John Kerry gave me a speech. He's talking about when he was a kid, he was swimming off... Woods Hole, Oceanographic, a little fucking prick, boy. What a prick. And he's talking about saving the ocean, right, at that big meeting? Where's all the fucking terrorists when you want one? Well, you know, the Americans said, well, we can't pay you to blow up Kerry yet. There'll come a time, if he becomes popular, we might pay you to fucking blow him up. But that's the American government. They create all the terrorists. Americans had the 500 Al Qaeda terrorist attacks. They documented 400 and something of them were done by the FBI. They paid for everything. They built the fucking bombs, bought the trucks, paid the guy fucking money, and then arrested them with a fake bomb. They became heroes and got promotions and another several thousand billion. But nuclear fuel fragment found over a mile away were ejected from the reactor cores and those explosions. Not spent fuel pools. They're, they're, they're missing. Spent fuel pool at number 
Uh, three is missing, for sure. Number four blew the fuck up. Number two melted down. The core broke it. The, the, the containment is broken off the fucking reactor. Br snapped right the fuck off and fell down. Core's long gone, but that was how much heat was in there. That'll happen at around 1,600 degrees, we'll go right through. But that thing hit around 9,000 degrees. But if the NRC telling you back then that it was ejected, yet they're at, the, they're at the Senate hearing a couple of days back and saying, no, it's all fine, structure's good, looks good. The fuel pull at number four fucking blew up, boy. It's a 10-story building, there's nothing left to it. Download the pictures below of my video, you moron. You idiots. You fucking monsters. I'm really friggin' upset with these people. I really am. I got a headache from it. Just published study, March 9, 2012, that is. Plutonium being found away from Fukushima is from nuclear fuel fragments blown out after the explosion. Chernobyl's one third the size of Fukushima's, any of Fukushima's reactors. Not only that, Chernobyl was only a 30% meltdown, and Fukushima, three times the size, was a 100% meltdown. Unit 3 was MOX fuel. The fuel pool is not even fucking dear, yet they're saying it's fine at the NRC and the Senate because they're the stupidest things imaginable or they're, they're doing this on purpose, which is true. They're not stupid. They're extremely fucking wealthy and they know exactly what they're doing. They're going on public television and lying to everybody on purpose because that's what they're going to regurgitate for the next couple of months in the media. That's what they're doing. They're, here's the story for the media for the next couple of months. It's two hours long, so you don't have to repeat the same shit all over and over and over. And pandering and sucking the nuclear industry's cock. Yeah, we don't care you're killing the Pacific Ocean. Lick, lick, lick. We don't care you're going to kill every fucking thing on this planet. Gobble, gobble, gobble. We don't give a fuck about humans. Gobble, gobble, gobble. That's what the NRC and the Senate... These are... Um, these are, uh, what do you call them, they're the, the towel boys at the men's bad houses. That's what their mentality is. They would have been just as happy being the towel boy at the men's bad house as where they are. They got no pride in themselves. They don't care about their family, even though they lie to them, disguise what they're doing. They, they look at themselves in the mirror every day and they want to break the mirror because they hate themselves, but they still go do it every day. They're the lowest form of life on the planet. They're psychopathic. They, they got themselves in that position so they could fuck over people with a stroke of a pin because they don't, they're not capable of doing it themselves with their own hands, right? They're cowards. But they figure if they do it on a stroke of a pin, it doesn't have, right? No one, it won't blow back on them so much. They, they would like to have the courage to do it themselves, but they're not capable of it. Plutonium likely ejected from the fuel pools during the explosion up to seven several miles from the reactor, April the 7th, 2011. This happened March 11th, 2011. March, April the 7th. So less than a month later, plutonium likely ejected from fuel pools during explosion, up to seven miles. Japan expert. Second explosion was more like a bomb in Fukushima. The spent nuclear fuel flew 30 kilometers away, but the buildings are intact. The fuel pools are intact. The pellets collected by the military, but the fuel pools are intact because we said so, right? Forget all the fucking headlines. The Journal Tribune, fuck it. They don't, that doesn't matter. Tammy, you're, who wrote that, you're Tammy Wells, you're a fucking idiot. You gotta learn to play the game. They should have evacuated up to 300 kilometers. Spent fuel, nuclear fuel, flew 30 kilometers away. Pellets, pellets. Because the rods were full of pellets. There's 120. There's 3,450 rods or assemblies in the reactors. In uranium-238, plutonium combinations from spent or old nuclear missiles. All the reactors have plutonium up to 500 kilograms of plutonium to them. This is an amazing amount. This is an inconceivable amount. You don't need that for power. You don't need none of that for power. You didn't need to have a two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. That's 18 million times worse than Chernobyl. But it's okay, it's not gonna hurt anybody. Now they gotta contain Dana. They're stuffing homeless people in there all the time, Dana. Everything's good, Dana. 
the NRC was up on TV and said so. I would fucking holly here to your head if I get hold of you. Don't think I wouldn't. Large quality of Neptunium 239, I don't give a fuck. Flew at least 60 kilometers from Fukushima. Because that's the only way you're going to get attention this day and, age, way, day, day, and wage, day and age anyway. If you get them by the hair to the head swing around a few fucking times. You get some attention then. You go up and yell at them, you'll get beat up, tased, pepper sprayed, criminalized, thrown away. You go up and get them by the hair to the head, you'll have all the fucking lawyers out there fighting for you. They'll be a celebrity, right fucking bucks. Get up, grab them by the balls. Somebody else grab them by the hair of the head and try to tear them in two. That's, what you sh that's what's going to happen to them. When people find out, and it's coming, that's why they're building this police state. That ain't going to fucking do jack shit. Giving all the cops and all the towns a tank. Yeah, good luck. That's going to stop people. Good luck on that one. They'll use that to get out of fucking dodge. They're not going to use that to fight. When the shit hits the, flo hits the ground... Because it's going to. You can't keep it down. You can lie for a little bit longer. You can pretend for a little bit longer. But you got 20 species of starfish down on our coastline. Like, uh, 1,440 minutes a day. They're St. Paddy's Day times 20 going into the ocean. So what's going to happen? Well, at 2 kilometers an hour, 2 miles an hour, it's going to crash that ocean in 130 days. And so it's St. Paddy's Day all the way behind us. And so as that mixes with the other ocean, at some point, it's mixing with itself. And that's what it's doing right now. It's starting to mix with itself. But it's not stopped hemorrhaging out. And then all the stuff that's disposition all over the country is washes, you know, on the east side of the Rockies go to the Atlantic, on the west it's going to go to the Pacific. It's not just Canada. It's not just United States, Alaska. It's not just Vietnam, China. It's not it's every country on, on an ocean ultimately will be impacted severely in a short order. Worse than interior, but interior is going to get hammered because it's cumulative. Because it's being liberated from the ocean, dragged in and redeposited on communities endlessly. This is what our oceans have done since the beginning of time. And because it's St. Paddy's Day into the ocean, constantly we don't try to stop it. We don't go to work. We don't unite. If there was a big meteorite in the sky, we'd have every, we'd be doing 1.6 million academic journals very quick on that fucker. But uh, Fukushima, oh, that's okay, because a couple of monkeys, like Ken Buesler, who's not even a nuclear scientist, you know, 850 scientists at, at fucking Woods Hole, and Ken Buesler's the man, the go-to guy. What the fuck, over? What the fuck? Surely the fuck they got someone better than that there. Ken was off doing his own thing since Chernobyl. He came back on board. He says that in his lectures. You mean to tell me we got no nuclear scientists on this planet? They showed up at Harvard. I put that video up there a few weeks ago, 30 seconds, right? To a link to the full video. Melted reactors, melted cores. Melt throws, fucking detonations. Four days later, same thing with MIT, same thing with Stanford, same thing with the NRC actually told a story after at the Senate hearing on the 16th, March 16, 2011. I got that video up there. I had to delete the Fukushima bits. I had nine strikes on my account this morning, and I'm streaming live tonight. I don't get that one. I had... Um, Videos blocked worldwide on my site this morning. Uh, three videos blocked worldwide. I had a strike on my account. I can't find it. I deleted all nine of the videos. And uh, let me see. Hang on. No, it's on that other computer. <coughs> I took screen captures of it, but... 350 uh, subscribers missing on my account today. It's 4,200 now taken off my site. Another 600,000 views taken off my counter, that, right? And so counters are important because they get you up in certain positions out there on the indexes. So they took me out of the indexes by doing that, I guess. But by taking out 350 people, a lot of those would have been key people. Uh, and so they, they got at me on that. So that's win. Like, that to me, that makes me happy. So when people tell me I shouldn't swear, that makes me happy. Because uh, you've got no right to tell me anything. 
about the way I talk. Particularly when I don't even know you and you hide on piano ghost count. You tell me, oh Dana, you don't hold your chin up, you know. Suck your stomach in, your chest out, and your shoulders back. You're old Dana, you're crippled Dana. I've heard all of this used against me in blogs and everywhere else in comment section. Can't trust him, he's old. Can't trust him, he's ugly. Can't trust him, he's in a wheelchair. Can't trust him, he's crippled. We even had someone, you remember that, was here saying, he's got brothers and sisters. <laughs> Trying to demonize me. But that was one of the things he said. It's like, what? No, I'm a researcher. And I don't give a fuck about what people say about me, what people think about me. I'm not going to adjust my life to make every little fucking criticism because I'm worried about what somebody is might not be, is going to unsubscribe or is not going to like it. Too fucking bad. I can't please everybody. I'm not even going to try. I am who I am. And if you grew up in an environment where nobody swears, then there's something wrong with your fucking head. You've got some serious mommy issues or something. You'll never be normal. Because if your friends don't swear, you don't know how to get rid of rid of uh, tension. You're painting it up. The word exists and is used because it's a universally very good word. And just because you're a school and a government or some entity said it's inappropriate, they, they you could imagine how anal their life actually is. If you're not free to say the things you feel, to say the, and talk the way you talk, if you have to construct everything before you say, if you have to write down everything before you fucking do it, um, that doesn't translate into in, into reality. You know, you're building a little paradigm to try to fit into somewhere. That'll never work. That can never work. I don't swear all the time. I swear when I want to, when it's appropriate for me, and because that's what I do in my own life. Large quantity of Neptunium-239 flew at least 60 kilometers from Fukushima meltdown, decays into plutonium-239, September the 13th, 2011. Well, no, everything's intact here, Dana. Gunderson on plutonium, I believe fragments of nuclear fuel are in the ocean from the explosion at Unit 3 and Unit 1. Well, Unit 3 is missing, 10-story building. Mox fuel is friggin' missing. It's hemorrhaging all that stuff to melt the cores, whatever's left there. You know, a lot of it was blown out. Maybe all of it was blown out. Who friggin' knows? The melted fuel pools above it, maybe that was blown out. But all the contaminants from all of those reactors, this unprecedented. This is a meteorite on our planet already. And the shock wave is coming, make no mistake about it. 10 sievers per hour means there's a direct exposure to the fuel rods. And they were getting a million sievers outside of Unit 2. And I believe that was from Unit 3's uh, detonation. Damaged fuel rods are cracked and leak in radioactive gases in Fukushima. Unit 4, pull. Water appeared trapped in the racks. Another assembly bent when mishandled during the transfer, which is bullshit. It was a transfer before the accident. They got they had assemblies like once again let me finish that one I mentioned it earlier was each reactor had three thousand four hundred fifty assemblies there's around eighty rods twelve foot rods in each assembly like two hundred eighty thousand rods in a reactor they're twelve feet long and a gram produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands on the beach and they are all aerosoled and atomized and gone. And chunks were blown all over the place too, but the fuel pools were there too. Hundreds of thousands of rods are friggin' melted down or missing or evaporated or melt, you know, in chunks all over that site from the detonations. This is not going away. I'm not going away. This is not going away. I'll go away if this goes away. If you go down there and try to clean it up, I'll give it up right away, maybe. Actually, I don't trust you anymore anyway because you're lied for over three years. You killed the Pacific and just incredible uh, hundreds of millions of people so far uh, in the short term. Everybody's going to get it in the long term. Eight million species on this planet are going to fucking die from this accident. And if you got all these reactors out there and another one goes down, it'll just be a little bit quicker. 
Well, I just yacked my head off for an hour and ten minutes. I'm sorry. Oops. I didn't realize it went that long. I'm just really, really, really upset with the system. I'm not, I haven't stopped. Okay. Okay, folks, well, I'll come and say goodnight. Night to the Punisher. Watch your video. Watched a couple more too, but hi, Sylvia, uh, Mickey, Kevin, oh, Daniel. Yeah, the Neutron Bean's been coming at it there. We got all kinds of records of that, Kevin. Yeah, it was confirmed over and over and over and over and over and over. It's important, by the way. I'm not saying nothing. I'm just saying. Alex. Um, Bill Reed. China. Amters. Lorena Rell. Checks and balances. Mickey, everybody. Roosevelt. Good night, everybody. Like you say, the comment section really went to a scratch tonight because... They got rid of 350 subscribers on me today and 600,000 of my views because I talked about the NRC last night, so I'm being punished. That's what happened tonight, guarantee you. Because usually there's four, five, six, seven hundred comments before I start the video, and tonight I think there was like 70 or 80. But I knew that was going to happen because I lost 350 subscribers today, so when I seen it, I was like, cool. <laughs> That's cool. Because to me, that, that gives me more energy. I don't say good night here, but that gives me more energy. That puts, that makes me smile. It really does. It makes me go, yeah. yeah. They're getting desperate now. They can't stop what we already done, right? They can't change what you're doing. It's not me. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they can't stop what you got done. They can't stop what we got done. They can't stop what everybody up there is doing. There's tons of people out in my video. They, you know, go. They got narratives. Great narratives. They got both sides of the story. You know, there's all kinds of stuff down there. Very important stuff. All kinds of links. You should at least look through it. And there's a bunch of people down below that I think, you know, they work really hard. They don't stop. That doesn't mean that's all that's out there. That I haven't gotten any more room under my page. But, you know, that gives me, every time I see that and I put all those links below, that gives me hope. Because no matter what happens, there's all these people that get it, and they're out there pushing and shoving back, relentlessly educating the masses. And that's what's important, right? What's important is that we don't slack off, but we push back harder, right? Every every day we push a little harder. I'm researching, and I'm gathering up stuff. I'm trying to start up the dot .net. I was visiting with the lawyers last week, and turns out I don't have to spend my money there, so that's cool. Uh, so it's less money to blow on that, I can blow on the other stuff. This week, and I'll end up with the, we'll have that 8-core order this week. And as soon as I get it, I'll switch on a full wire cast. So we should be able to do the full screen PR because it's 8-core, brand new. And and uh, all the chrome keys and stuff like that. So it'll make it a lot more entertainment in that sense where you can bring in the pictures and the videos behind me and also import it with the wire cast alongside of me. And because I have... Uh, 12,000 headlines, I have 5,000 pictures, I have the the models from all over the world, uh, I've been f hardcore, I don't stop them at it all the time, and I need that system so I could actually do this right. And once again, the .org is so important because uh, losing 350 subscribers, you know, shows you how vulnerable it is to be up on Google, it's really bad. So, we'll catch you folks later, good night everybody. And once again, I send out hugs for everybody. I'm a little disoriented tonight because I just went an hour and ten minutes. I didn't expect to do it, and I won't shut up, so I'll shut up. <laughs> See you folks later.